Hyundai i20, changing bottom arm or wishbone as it's called and the, one of the suspension struts or shock absorbers as they're called. This is passenger side. Alright, check the car out a little bit. That's the proper axle uh, jacking point just here. I've got it just be on there and I'll put it on a pair of jacks. What I'm going to do is undo the uh, main wheel bolts in a minute while the car's the wheel's not turning. Okay, I've got a wheel under there and uh, jack, 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 probably jack stands. I'll probably. Okay, so I'm taking off this, this bottom arm. There's a bolt down here, a bolt in front of here. Uh, and I'm changing this to somewhere. My mine got crushed. It's all, all over one side. Okay, take it off the bottom arm. Get my lubricant spray. Bolt there. Yeah. Forty millimeter spanner. Getting the. Uh, 17 millimeter spanner for the brake uh, caliper bracket. My sport screwdriver. Remove the rotor. Okay. Nineteen size, uh, nineteen spanner, full joint, just here. 70 millimeter on the bottom arm. Yeah. 90 mil. Okay, two bolts. That one, that one taken out uh, from the bottom arm. Bottom arm, try, I've loosened the ball joint. So, I'm going to try and do this without destroying the CV joint, see how it goes. Okay, old bottom arm come off. Old bottom arm, come off. So, ball joint location. Yeah, that one's the uh, front wishbone or bottom arm. Yeah, hold there. Back wishbone, bottom arm. That's the ball joint. That's the front. That's the back. Okay, attempting to move the strut. On the i20, I've already got the caliper hung up on the spring, which is not right. I have to hang it on something else. Uh, the top is a bit odd. Taking off the windscreen wiper area, quite easy to take and bolt it. Two clips. Uh, there's this location here. You take this off to remove the cap. All right. Windscreen wipe assembly. I think I need to take off that one. That one. Done a few of the 10 mil bolts over there. Window I didn't make this very well. Popping the strut. One, two, three, four, five. Five threads. If you undo this, all of that turns, and we're basically undoing the spring. So we use out. Just uh, undo it like uh, I don't know how it was sprung up. Not your usual kind of setup. I'm going to have to put some spring compressors in there. Okay. Driver's side, for reference, it's about four and a half turns. So this is what it looks like before you muck around with it. Okay, plan is put a pair of these, one there, I'm going to put one there, spring compressors. Compress it up. There's two nuts, one on top, I think there's one below, and that's the main one. I'm not 100% sure. That should make it safe for me to turn when there's little resistance. The top one should turn without turning the bottom. That's the plan. Okay, adjustable in there, top of that, with a 17 spanner. Pulled it, managed to come off without turning the shaft of the shaft of this um, shock absorber. To, to the spring presses taking some of the pressure off 
warm them up. Hopefully it'll yeah, dust caps off now. Well, you see that that nut there holds the uh, spring in place. What happened before was I was turning it, the whole thing was turning, that was pretty dangerous. So it's counting threads. Visual check. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about 16 on this one I've touched, so I will check it again. Okay, that uh, stabiliser bar's out. That was in there. The nut back on. Let me get which one's which. It wasn't on very tight, so I won't put it back on very tight. I had to check it up though. Check out the bottom knuckle. It was like an angle. Checked out. Right, so the correct order, take that little stabiliser thing out because that's under a lot of stress and it goes in that hole. Take that little sensor out, little pipe out. Um, keep this in, don't take this off first. I had to put that back on and came crushing down. Uh, break the bolts, break the bolts. Once you've done that, don't forget, grab these. Then you should proceed with that because that holds the things at the top because it came crashing down. Luckily, I think this bar caught this drive shaft. This came away, but that's fine. That's the order to do it. All right, shock absorber, high and die, 20 on the floor. Spring compressors. I have to undo that nut. Hopefully, it'll just slide out and change the bearing anyway, as well. In there, there's a little tiny frustrating. See where the spring is sat. There's the bottom hole. It's putting sat like that. And to readjust those springs, so now the spring compressors are on the spring, not on the bottom of the uh, strut there. I did it before, press compressing striding springs, no good. Alright, torque up the, uh, well, you can't really reach it with a torque wrench. Uh, Ball joint, I think it's 46. I just did it with my arm. That front one, uh, 100 newton meters. This one's 46 in it. On the back, this is my top wrench. On the back, 120. All right, changing the knuckle. So, first job take off the wheel, take off this cap. So you can put the wheel back on and crank off this. Crank up that, take the paint and pin off, put the wheel back on and crank it off. Right, this is how far back it is before I take it off. Zoom in right in. Beyond the hole is, you can see, Quite a number of threads. How much? Okay, I see six complete threads and half a hole. So I'm not counting the rim. Complete threads is six and then half a hole at the back. Before go back on the ground, ready to crank it open. Although, uh, Taking off is usually quite easy. Putting it on is going to take uh, a lot of uh, pound force or new meat. Okay, so I've just unloosened it half a turn. Don't take it off, or you'll damage it. And now I'm cranking the wheel back out and taking it off properly. Now that the uh, main hub. Okay, safety first. One on the back. Room on the front. Taking a bit with this. One's right, that one's not really touching, but no one said there's a lot of wheel under there. And there is a rotor, so it's metal. As if it falls down. Okay, taken off the tie rod. So we've got a cock pin, small, very small cock pin. Castle nut, hit it on the top, lightly of a rubber hammer. Came straight off, I could have had to use my tool, but. Right. Taking the uh, main nut off. 
I'm gonna try and tap this. Taking a uh, loosened, taking out of the bottom bolt and strut, loosen up the top one, just hanging on, that one's off. Uh, looks like the flat side's on the inside. The split's just here, but the other way around it'll look. Okay, so the, the kind of beveled area is on the right. If it's the wrong way around, it'll be beveled area on the left. And this is the driver's side. Okay, could have put the castle nut back on so it's flush with the, the end of that shaft. So I've got something flat here against. I'm not sure if I'll get it first try, probably not, but we'll see. Well, here goes. I'll give it two taps, three taps, and then I'll uh, cut it and I'll tell you how long it took me. It all depends on this. Well, holy shit, came out of one very light tap. I'm very happy with that. Okay, to the brake pipe, hold it off. Try taking that flaming ABS head to just crack there. So, I'm gonna I think I can do it with them on the other side. Push, take the, take the whole hub off, push it, push this pipe through on the other side. Uh, a bit of it snapped off, so it's not important. That's the sensor down there. I'll put that back on here. Anyway. I want to save this, so I whack the hell out of uh, this area with a rubber hammer. I didn't damage that by pushing one of them forks into it. Still got that up, that on. I don't want to strain that, so we still got that on. Okay, ABS sensor out. In the end, I didn't push from the back when I took the hub off, I just prized it from about here. Using a screwdriver, had better access to it. There is, I'm probably going to grease this up as well. That's the ABS thing, isn't it? Get it out of the way. Make sure this don't come out too far. This one. Old hub, shaking like shit when I was braking. New hub. People at home died, put it together for me as well. I bought it. I ain't got a press. Yeah. I forgot to put this dust cover on, so there's no. I'm not going to take it off again. So I've got to improvise. These two bolts hold it on. I should have just cut it once here and once here, and then got coming sideways with these. I drilled some holes in there, but I'm going to put some glue on there. I think this will hold it in place. That's the main thing. Okay, so I've put the, all the bolts back on. I've not tightened them up yet. Uh, main hub. 240 newton meters, you have to convert it foot pounds if you don't know what it is. Calipers, 78 newton meters. Tie rod, 15 to 33, not one there, 15 to 33. Uh, ball joint, 60 newton meters. Uh, stabilizer bar, no, I didn't take that one off. That's up there, I didn't take that one off. Uh, Brake bolts, the ones that go on the brake calipers, the uh, the ones that slide in and out, holding on to the brakes, they're only 21.6. Right, so I tighten them up, and uh, this is hung up. Uh, put the sensor back in, that back in. Uh, in the end, I just tightened up the brake, that bit that broke off, and that was fine. Okay, I forgot to mention, so. Running on that now. Uh, wheels back on the ground. Taking this up to 210, uh, but officially it's 240 newton meters. 210, I should think it's enough. I cranked it once or twice a bit more. Uh, I forgot to mention the strut. Two two bolts in the strut. 100 newton meters. Okay. Don't forget to take it to the uh, garage and have it have the uh, tracking sorted out again.